The low-lying coasts of Holland have periodically been flooded, so great dams have been erected for protection from the sea. But this protection has been achieved at the cost of a saltwater ecology. The sea means many things to the people of the Netherlands. It is a source of great wealth and livelihood. It is a place for pleasure amid abundant natural beauty. And it is, for the Dutch, an ever-present danger, bringing death and devastation when storms drives its waters into the low-lying towns and countryside. For centuries, the Dutch have protected themselves by building dikes that separate them from the sea. Traditionally, one effect of the dikes has been the destruction of the rich and fragile ecology of the coastal zones. Such damage to the environment has been considered a necessary cost of ensuring safety. In the 1960s, two small groups of citizens began to ask if the dikes that were under construction in the southwest of the Netherlands might be built in such a way that the environment would not be sacrificed. Recently, the Dutch completed a massive and ingenious hydrotechnological project that represents the culmination of these citizens' efforts. The Eastern Scheldt Barrier is a new kind of dike. It is a dike with gates. In normal weather, the gates remain open and allow the tide in. They close only when storms bring the threat of floods. Last October, amid great celebrations attended by leaders from around Europe, the barrier commenced operation. The building of the Eastern Scheldt Barrier was accomplished with extraordinary determination on the part of a small group of citizens and politicians. Jan Turlo was one of five members of Parliament who in the mid-70s responded to the citizens who fought to save the ecology of the Eastern Scheldt. High winds are often attacking the coast of the Netherlands and the estuaries like on the Easter Scheldt where we are now on the ship. And we see one of the many, many miles of dikes that protect the Netherlands, because a good part of the country is below sea level. And did we know that? In 53, we had a terrible flood. It was, of course, not the first one in history, but it was a terrible one. 1,834 people in the southwest part of the Netherlands were dead, and lots of damage were done. Here are further details of the flood. The flood, last night and this morning, has now reached the proportions of a national disaster. During the last few hours, Reports have been coming in of deaths, as well as of dikes bursting and of flooding. Several polders have been swamped or are being submerged at this moment. The situation is still extremely confused. People who were out in the country at the time the dikes burst were stranded. Others had to take refuge on the top floor of their houses or up trees. They barely had time to escape into the attic. There are more than 300 species of algae, plankton, and water plants in the delta, richly supported by the unique mix of carbon from the sea and nitrogen and phosphorus from the rivers. These smaller life forms, in turn, nourish many species of North Sea fish. And the delta is home to a profusion of shellfish, oysters, mussels, shrimp, and lobsters. The shellfish provide for a thriving local industry. When the underwater life is exposed at low tide, it attracts a rich variety of birds, for whom the delta is one of the three most important wintering grounds in all of Europe. Much of this life would have been in jeopardy if a traditional dike had blocked the flow of the tide into the delta. The effects would have been felt in distant places as well. Lower populations of fish throughout the North Sea, fewer birds as far away as Canada and Siberia. By the mid of the year 60, when the barriers based on the Delta law were being built, a new generation of people started to ask themselves, are we doing the right thing? Is it right to deprive this beautiful estuary of the tide and thus impoverish the environment? And they formed an action group, they formed a study group. And although they were few against many, in collecting arguments, 
they were winning fields. They were convincing people. They were convincing some members of parliament. They were convincing more members of parliament. And finally, the government had to listen to them. The government had to do something. And the storms went high, the political storms, as the storms on the North Sea. And almost the government collapsed over this issue. But in the end, a decision was made, a decision for safety for the southwest of the Netherlands and also something good for the environment. Others joined the environmental interests in voicing their concerns about the effects of the eastern Scheldt barrier. The shellfish industry would have disappeared from the area. The supply of fish in the North Sea would dwindle. Tourism and recreation would suffer. By the mid-1970s, it became clear that the political will was there, the will to satisfy the needs not only of safety, but of the economy and the environment as well. There remained the task of designing a structure that met all of these aims. The solution that emerged, the storm surge barrier, has been called the eighth wonder of the world. To build the barrier, the Dutch spent two and a half billion dollars, twice the cost of a conventional dike. The barrier runs nearly four miles across three separate channels. Its foundation consists of 66 piers, each of which is 12 stories tall, more than 160 feet wide, and weighs 18,000 tons. Each of the 63 gates is 140 feet wide and 17 feet thick. A new roadway crosses over the top of the barrier. The barrier took 10 years to build. The gates and piers are so big that they could not be built elsewhere and shipped to the site, so a new island was built just for construction. Three special boats were designed. One was equipped with giant tubes that shook the sand on the sea bottom to make it into a smoother and stronger base for the piers. Another carried the mattresses on which the piers would rest. The third carried the enormous piers themselves. The piers had to be placed within centimeters of their assigned positions. Much of the Netherlands is made up of drained and reclaimed land that the Dutch call polders. Today, the Dutch are engaged in reclaiming more than half a million acres of the Zuider Zee. If it were not for its 1,500 miles of dike, farmers' everyday livelihood depends on the teeming life of the delta. There is little doubt that the barrier is a success. Suppose that they had closed the Easter Scheldt completely. What would that have meant for the divers? Well, now it is salt water yeah. and when it is closed then it is uh, sweet water yeah. all the things are died then the, the natural life would have died so how many varieties do you see now underwater uh, well we see a lot of course now and i think there is an, an, an life of more than 200 animals 200 animals, More. fish and, uh, fish and seafood and lobsters, and, lobsters yes. and, and, and mussels. A small group of citizens succeeded in convincing the Dutch people that they could ensure safety without sacrificing the environment. In deciding to build the Eastern Scheldt Barrier, the Dutch, renowned for centuries as hydraulic engineers, took on a challenge that called for unprecedented ingenuity in science and engineering. It called for an exceptional national commitment. So here I am on this monument, on this statue for the environment, the storm surge barrier, which was finished a few months ago. And never ever in the world so much money has been spent just for the environment. And I think it's worth it. <laughs>